What's the best thing about installing a permanently connected generator to your house? The power never shuts off. Here we are in front of the generator house. Built this in the summer of 2017, so three and a half coming up on four years ago. I think I bought the Harbor Freight 8750 generator earlier, maybe June, early May of 2017. And then we got this house built in July, August of 2017. Uh, I was looking for something to provide a house uh, for insulating purposes of the generator running and um, provide shelter for the generator. I didn't want to spend the money on a Generac or some other uh, whole, whole house uh, generator that's more permanently installed than this even is uh, because frankly I didn't have it and I figured for the amount of times that we would use it, it wasn't really quite worth it. And I'm glad we didn't because I installed this ever since the inst I have installed it, have not needed it. Uh, there was one instance of an outage this last winter when a drunk driver went off the road, down the road, and took out the power line really close to our house. And uh, that was the only time that we've, uh, we've lost power. And, but that was in the middle of the night from, you know, 2 o'clock in the morning until 6 o'clock in the morning. And it came back on by the time we woke up, didn't need it at all. So I guess that's the benefit of, of doing the generator hookup. You never really need it. Uh, hopefully someday we will, uh, but we'll see. So we'll go over the generator hookup and uh, the the, ho the generator house. I'm not going to go inside the house at all. I'm just going to do the building I built specifically to house this Harbor Freight 8750 generator. So this generator, of course, 8750, 8,750 8, watts. Uh, that's the peak watts. So that's like if your well pump kicks on or something else to start up to get the the motor running continuous running watts is 7000 watts it has a dc output it has a couple breaker sets of ground uh regular ac 20 amp plugs uh, four of those and then there's a ac 130 amp plug here or i think it's 27 or something like that and then another ac on the bottom i don't remember what this one is uh, that's a 120. This is a 240. Uh, I got the that built. I got a battery from Walmart for it, and I built this little shed. I actually used the generator to power the house this summer. I bought it, but I didn't have the shed built. I didn't have it permanently connected. I just had it running. We had a birthday party, and uh, we needed power with people over in 2017 for this birthday party. Um, so that's it. That's the generator itself, and now we'll, we'll look at the shed and the connections I have for it. So this is the the doors, the front door. It's just a shed door, pretty simple. Opens and shuts. I don't. I haven't locked it. I've got the ability to lock it, but I never did. Um, everything was built and designed by myself, uh, and then I have it so that the roof lifts up because. It's kind of hard to get in here if you want to gas it up or pull the generator out. It's hard to get inside, so I've got little latches on the inside, and the actual roof is hinged. I've got hinges on the back side, just some old door hinges. Lift it up like this, put it on stilts, and now I have access to do whatever I need to do. So I'll bring you inside. So for the intake side, uh, there's need to keep the engine cool, so I've got a six inch duct fan back in the back corner that powers up as soon as the generator runs on. That's this black cord right here. As soon as the generator hooks it starts up, blows cold, warm, cool air in right over the 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 fan for the cooling the engine, the Predator engine, and that seems to be be pretty efficient. And then on the exhaust side for the blowing warm air out, I can close this generator shed uh, when it's running. I have just an attic fan, um, and I've got it turned down all the way to 50, so it turns on as soon as it warms up to at least 50 degrees in here. And it's just wired right directly to the other plug, the gray plug here. 
in the generator. So as soon as it reaches 50 degrees and I plug turn the generator on, that attic fan will turn on. And then on the exhaust side for the engine, I just took some class uh, type B um, vent pipe, insulated pipe. And I've got just a little elbow screwed right to the exhaust. Uh, I, I don't even know what that's like, it's a uh, cover on this side. And then it goes out the back side. So check the back side out. Okay, so here's the exterior. I built it with cedar as a siding because that matches our house. We have cedar uh, bevel siding. Uh, the, the house is actually rabbited and this stuff is not rabbited, but it achieves the same look uh, on the back side or on the on the exterior. Here we got the the ground coming out here, and then this is power going to the house buried power. I buried it across the driveway, and then it comes in. On the house by the the regular electric meter the electrical panels right in that corner anyway so it helped, worked out really good to come from this way minimize my digging and wiring into the house on the back side you can see the roof is just some corrugated steel here's the exhaust again uh, uh, type b gas vent insulated got the flange there and i've got it teed off so exhaust nothing comes in or out I mean, this side's cap so the exhaust just goes away from the intake so any heat goes that way to the to the left looks like you need to put a little more caulk in there um, here I've got just some quarter inch or three eighths inch uh, wire so no critters can get inside there but allows it to be open all the time and then here's the intake on this side uh, for the the six inch duct fan uh, for push, putting uh, cooler air over the motor. So that's it. That's all it is on the back side. Just, just a couple ducts and intakes. <sighs> Look over the top. Here we can see these are the latches I'm using to hold the roof down. It just little latch hooks on the back side, right up there. Once that's down, yeah, pretty simple. Now the power, just got a camper plug I think, and it's just, or whatever the plug requires here, I don't remember what it is. Um, and it's a 30 amp plug. I actually wired everything uh, with 6 gauge wire. Uh, so it's ready for 50 amp service if I ever up, want to upgrade to a 50 amp generator for the house. Right now the 30 amp has suited our needs, uh, even though I've actually never used it. So I don't know if we'll ever upgrade our generator. Excuse the kids. Uh, so six amp goes to here, or uh, six gauge, and then it goes into underground wire in that box, goes out underneath, into the ground, trenched it through the ground. Once we get over to the house side, all it is is the wire comes in, goes in the house, goes down inside of the panel down along the wall into the breaker panel uh, and then there's one slot one uh, double double breaker slot 30 amp uh, right now because that was pushing from the generator and there's an interlock device for my specific uh, panel and the interlock device let's get me in the frame here the interlock device is used so that the uh, only way that we can turn the breaker on for the generator is that the main breaker going to the service power is turned off and that there's it's it interlocks it and so uh, you cannot have both of them on at the same time and that just prevents if there's a power outage it prevents any uh, electricity going back out on the service from the generator um, may not work for other people but it works for us for the limited times we need it I haven't used it yet. I've uh, got a, uh, an alarm that I want to install on the panel so that if the power comes back on, I, it'll tell me that the power is on and I can go and switch the stuff back over from the service or from the generator to the service. I've had that alarm for about two years and it has not been installed yet because I haven't lost power. I don't want to, you have to wrap the wire 
the alarm around the service wire and I don't really feel like getting that close to it. So that's it on my generator house for the Predator 8750. Uh, we could fire it up here and give a little demo and then we'll send you in away. I'm going to disconnect the wire going to the house because that's simple. Don't need it. And all it is, I've, I always shut the fuel off when I'm not using it. And then on the left hand side there's a choke. Turn that on. That's it. Ready to power the house if the power goes out. Hopefully you can hear me talking. Um, and when you have it closed, you can barely hear it in the house. There's still a low rumble. Both the windows shut. Uh, it makes things a lot quieter. Uh, and for emergency use, when we need it, when the power goes out, it's still from a storm or a uh, you know, heavy ice storm or heavy snow or something. It's definitely nice to have that backup. It was really, really useful when we had little kids and. Uh, it's going to be useful for the future as well. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, maybe subscribe to my channel if you want to hear see more videos in the future. I've got a couple wood woodworking projects coming up. We're going to build an armoire. We've got to build a uh, uh, firewood uh, roadside stand. We need to build a uh, planter for herbs around the deck. So I'm going to record each one of those and we'll put them on, on the channel for you to enjoy. And um, we'll keep doing some chat tractor stuff, firewood stuff, of course. And then we have one more big project we're starting here really soon. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to release videos or what I'm going to do for it, but we're going to be doing a kitchen remodel um, here this summer. We were going to do an addition, but lumber prices, you know what they are, um, just not worth it. So we're going to try and reuse, reuse a lot of our cabinets, buy some new appliances, move the kitchen a little bit, do a little bit of plumbing and some new flooring and make it a, a nice livable space uh, for the future. Uh, so that's going to be coming up here in this spring, summer, fall. Not exactly sure on timing. We're starting to order some things now and get the work to on. So again, if you like this video, like, subscribe, you know what to do. And we'll catch you on the next one. See you later.